There are a few topics that raise as much excitement in the hair loss community as Brizula, also known as Class Cotero. We'll often do a video on an unrelated topic, and in the comments, people will be asking us about Brizula. Well, guys, today we'll be doing exactly that. We're going to dive into the science and take a look at exactly how Class Cotero works, what sets it apart from other hair loss medications, and what you can realistically expect it to do for your hair. So, stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here from HairGuard.com, where people who are worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. Now, just before we get into the video, if you want to get access to the hair nutrition plan, then make sure to click the link in the description. You get 21 delicious recipes designed specifically for faster, stronger hair growth. The meals are loaded with nutrients like biotin, zinc, and collagen to make hair as thick and strong as possible. And without any further delay, let's get straight into it. So Clascoterone is a topical medication developed for two conditions, acne and androgenetic alopecia. This past August, it made history when it was FDA approved for the treatment of acne, which made it the first medication with a novel mechanism of action to gain this distinction in almost four decades. It will be sold as an acne cream under the brand name Win Levy and is expected to be available in early 2021. The company behind Clascoterone, Cassiopeia, are about to start phase 3 trials on Clascoterone for male pattern hair loss. They are also conducting phase 2 research for female pattern hair loss. If the drug gets approved for hair loss, it will be sold as a liquid under the proposed brand name Zula. So it will be something very similar to minoxidil, though at this point we don't know if it will be a once daily or a twice daily application. But we do know that it will be at a 7.5% concentration. More on that a little bit later. We have no further details of this scheduled phase 3 trial, but as soon as these become available, you can be assured that you will first learn from us. So let's see how Clascoterone works to combat hair loss. As I mentioned, it's a topical antiandrogen, and in particular, an androgen receptor blocker. So the androgen receptor is the structure in the hair follicle and sebaceous gland cells onto which DHT binds. After the DHT binds onto this receptor, it sends a signal to the cell nucleus, modifying the expression of androgen-related genes. And it's this biochemical chain triggered by DHT that leads to the gradual miniaturization of the hair follicle. Or at least that's the theory. Now, finasteride and dutasteride are oral medications that systemically inhibit the synthesis of DHT, so they prevent your body from producing DHT in the first place. DHT is described by some as more or less a useless hormone in adulthood. But, whatever the case, it is a hormone, and completely blocking its production is not really a very good idea. Well, clascoterone doesn't inhibit DHT production one bit. It works downstream, topically blocking the androgen receptors in the hair follicles and sebaceous glands, thereby preventing the cells from being activated by the DHT molecule. The way this works is clascoterone has the same general backbone structure as DHT with four rings. So it's sufficiently similar with DHT to bind to the androgen receptor, but not similar enough to actually activate it, which means that there's no possibility for the actual DHT that's floating around in your scalp to bind to the androgen receptor and then actually activate the cells. The end result is exactly what you get with finasteride or dutasteride. And clascoterone is very good at what it does. When used topically, it's estimated to have twice the antiandrenic potency of finasteride. But the massive advantage of clascoterone is that you're not messing with your male hormones, so you keep the side effects to a minimum, which we'll get into right now. So libido problems, erectile dysfunction, ejaculation issues, sperm changes, gynecomastia, well, you don't get any of that from clascoterone. Obviously, the fact that it's a topical plays a big role role in this. Having said that, the data that we have so far do suggest some systemic absorption, albeit low. The concentration of clascoterone in the blood is the same 12 hours after a single application as it is after 28 days of continual usage, meaning the systemic absorption plateaus after the first administration. And the reason for this is that even when clascoterone is absorbed, it's quickly metabolized by the liver, so it doesn't stick around your system for a long time. Its primary metabolite is cortexalone, and it's also known as 11-deoxycortisol. The one systemic side effect that cortexalone can cause is suppression of the so-called HPA axis, which is part of the endocrine system and controls the release of cortisol. And the primary symptoms of this are fatigue, difficulties with sleep, depression, and anxiety. It seems that teenagers are more susceptible to HPA suppression, and whenever it develops, treatment should be discontinued, after which normal HPA functioning is quickly restored. There are also the localized side effects that you'd expect from a topical medication. So, skin irritation, redness, itching, dryness, stuff like that. 
Now, this is all nice, but the million dollar question is just how good is Class Cotarone at growing hair? And to date, the only data that we have on this come directly from Cassiopeia, and in particular, their phase two trial of Class Cotarone for men with androgenetic alopecia. The men in this study received topical Class Cotarone at one of three dosages 2.5 or 5% twice daily, and 7.5% once or twice daily. You can see the results in this table BID stands for twice daily, and QD for once daily. The numbers you see are new hairs per centimeter squared. Compared to placebo, all groups experienced more hair growth. You can see that the twice daily 7.5% dosage gave the best results, followed by the 5% twice daily. And indeed, the 7.5% dosage is the one Cassiopeia have chosen for their phase three research. Now, I'm not going to lie. These aren't exactly the kind of results that you can get super excited about. The 7.5% dosage seems to give roughly as many hairs as minoxidil. At least that's what the existing data suggests. The phase three research might show us something different. But as things stand right now, class Cotarone does not seem to be more powerful compared to existing treatments. So I suspect a lot of the excitement around Buzula is coming from guys who are looking to add it to the hair loss regime, rather than use it as their primary or exclusive treatment. I have no doubt that the moment Buzula hits the market, we're going to be seeing a load of research papers on its potential for combination treatment, primarily with oral finasteride. And I have a feeling that we'll be seeing lots of DIY recipes on the internet on how to mix this stuff with minoxidil. Now guys, like with all other hair loss drugs, class Cotarone's results will only last as long as treatment. As soon as you stop using Brizula, the androgen receptor is no longer antagonized. The DHT can then once again bind it, and then hair loss resumes. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you want to learn more about the eight steps we'll use to regrow his hair, as well as our Derma Roller Mega Guide, then make sure to click the videos on the screen now.